Hello, everyone. Hi. A warm welcome to all of you who are attending our information day today. Thank you so much for your interest in our internship sharing section. My name is Matthew, currently a fourth year MBBS student. We are also pleased to have two other student ambassadors joining us today for the sharing. We've got Abby from BBA and Adelweiss from Social Science. If you have any question for us regarding internship during the sharing, please feel free to put your question in the Q&A section of the webinar. Let me first start off by sharing some of my internship experience with you all. So for me, my internship experience is centered mainly in how my curriculum is structured. For my MBBS curriculum, it is divided into several stages. We have spent our first two years in the preclinical stage, followed by a year of enrichment. Then we spent the last three years in the clinical uh, wards where we learn about different diseases and how to cure the patient. And therefore, my research experience is mainly centered to gain more hands-on experience of clinical uh, uh, exposure and also various non-clinical work such as research. And that's why I've joined and I've uh, done research uh, as a research assistant in Queen Mary Hospital in my first year's summer and at the beginning of my second year. I also joined a clinical attachment program in my first year's summer. So, in my year one, I joined a research intern scheme where I applied in April. This is a scheme initiated by the Faculty of Medicine since 2016. I worked full-time basis from July to August where I was responsible to handle patient data. Through those data, I was to analyze uh, their baseline characteristics and try to draw conclusions from them. Apart from my research experience, I also joined a clinical attachment program outside of HKU that year, where I joined uh, the clinical attachment program in the PY hospitals. This is to try to gain more hands-on clinical experiences. However, due to the COVID-19 situation, although my application was accepted, ultimately I didn't get to start my internship. However, after my first year research experience, I find, my, I find myself to really enjoy a lot about data analysis. That is why in my second year, I self-initiated a research program with a doctor at Queen Mary Hospital. Again, I was responsible to um, data and try to draw a conclusion. I also have the privilege to learn to write different uh, medical journals to try to present my findings and try to publish them in a, uh, in a medical professional journals. As you can see, I have multiple uh, research experiences, uh, uh, but, and I apply those uh, research through different means, through HKU or through self-initiation. So my tips for all of you during your time at university is always to explore, explore, and explore. I believe that universities are the best time for you to learn, not just about textbook knowledge, but to learn more about yourself to explore more about your strength, your weaknesses, and your personality, and most importantly, to try different things. Because this is the stage for you to try to fail and to understand yourself more and to keep moving forward. As you explore more, you'll find that there are multiple hidden gems in HKU and there are a lot of internship opportunity for you to join. For example, we've got the Hong Kong UI Gem program and the undergraduate research support scheme where you can do more research or even to present your research in an international, uh, international forum. My second tip for you all is always to try to network more, to try to uh, talk to people in the industry, to try to gain, uh, to try to ask them for their experience. I'm, I'm sure that their sharing will definitely benefit you as you work in your future career. And that is the end of my sharing. And let me now pass the time to Adelweiss. OK, so thank you very much, Matthew. So, hi everyone, I'm a year two social sciences student, I'm Adelweiss, and I'm currently majoring in psychology and counseling. So now I'll briefly introduce um, the internship scheme in social sciences. So for social sciences students, it's compulsory to fulfill our social innovation requirement. So basically for SI, we can either uh, fulfill using overseas or local internships. And we have the choice to uh, complete either a term time or a summer internship. So for me, I actually completed the term, I'm completing the term time internship in which I actually uh, work at the center throughout the school year. 
So I personally actually work at the center one day per week. But for summer internships, uh, we only do it in summer holidays and usually we do it in full time. So for social sciences students, we usually fulfill the SI requirement in year two or year three. So now I'll briefly introduce what I am currently doing for my SI internships. So I'm currently working in Edge Development Center, which is a psychology center that provides assessment, therapy, SEN training services, and even school services, which includes a Good Shepherd, Good Shepherd project that I'm currently working on. So my role is the operation team of the Good Shepherd project. So I may, mainly do some administrative duties, such as matching with tutors, communicating with tutors, handling daily inquiries. But at the same time, there are actually a lot of opportunities offered to us to understand psychologists or counselors' work. For instance, I actually have access to many resources on executive training tools. And also, um, the psychologists and the counselors from the center provides a lot of specialized training courses and also provides a lot of um, different talks on different uh, topics, such as crisis management to us. That gives us a lot of valuable skills and knowledge on psychology. And also, um, a thing that I enjoyed a lot from my internship is that I got to sit in supervisions of psychologists with tutors, which I definitely learned a lot. So now I'll briefly talk about my takeaways, even though I'm only a month into my internship. So I would say that um, the difficulties encountered by operation team did challenge me, but this, at the same time, this also really for, uh, allowed me to get out of my comfort zone because I wasn't familiar with administrative work before my SI. And also this also trained me to stay calm under pressure because um, as a part of the operation team, there's definitely a lot of ad hoc or unfamiliar tasks and you're bound to make mistakes as an intern. So under these stressful situations, how do you stay calm? So how do you stay composed? I think this is one of the greatest learnings I have in my internship. And also I think being initiative um, with your supervisor for extra opportunities and also to seek help when you need it is very important. And I would say um, because the Good Shepherd project I'm currently working it on is actually um, a very good example of indirect services in Hong Kong because I'm used to um, direct services provided I don't have much knowledge in indirect services, so this is a very good opportunity for me to know more about this, this um, part. So that's the end of my sharing, so now I'll pass the time to Abby. Yeah, sure. Hello everyone, this is Abby. So I'm currently in a BBA program majoring in wealth management. So a brief introduction. So why I actually get into internships are basically because like internships are not mandatory, but then they can be like a significant stepping stone to your career. I think it's uh, very important in the business industry that you have related work experience to kickstart your career. So um, particularly in the banking industry. And also the other reason is that um, I would like to find my own interests and strength uh, in such a diverse uh, industry. Uh, to kickstart my career on the right path. So there are mainly three types of internships. You can do a part-time one during semester. Particularly, you need to work for like two to three days a week. And another kind is a full-term one, a full-time one, which is during the semester break, um, or it's like a summer internship. And the third thing is like a placement internship where you do it during a gap semester or a gap year. So an overview of my experience, um, before uh, getting to university, I got an opportunity to work for chambers where I get to support like drafting legal documents and assisting the course of hearings and meeting. So here I get a, like a brief picture of how the law world works. And the second one, I got to uh, do an uh, intern in the New World Development Company. I worked in the property development and the sales and marketing uh, department. And I get to do some promotions on social medias and planning proposals on property developments. And here it's a, quite a special experience because I do it in Guangzhou instead of inside Hong Kong. So I actually get some special insights of how the Greater China is working. Uh, what's the difference between Hong Kong and China's work culture and stuff. So uh, the third one is in Boston Consulting Group. I work here during my semester, so it's a part-time work. 
I followed their ongoing projects, uh, like doing on-site observations, data analysis, or PowerPoints. So I get a lot of technical skills honed in this internship. And finally, it's the internship in Deutsche Bank, where I work in international private banks. So here, I work for both the front and back office, which include like the investment advisory and also some uh, background checks on client onboarding and business management. And I think this is the most significant experience I got so far. And I think I would like work for this this path after uh, this internship experience. Some major takeaway uh, from my internship. So I think uh, the most important thing I know from all this experience is that what my interest is and what will I choose across such a diverse industry. Because in the BBA program, they talk about everything. There are a lot of industries like accounting, consulting, and banking. It's very important for you to find your own interest to kickstart your path. And also, um, I get to get my graduate job opportunity through internships. And finally, they actually helped me to hone a lot of my technical and soft skills, which include like market sense, product universe, stuff that you may not be able to get from uh, book knowledge. And I also learned to pay more attention to details, work on the time limits, uh, communicate more effectively, etc. So that's my sharing. Thank you so much, Abby, for your fruitful sharing. I've got some follow-up questions for the two of you. Maybe I'll first start off with Abby. Abby, can you tell us how do you find your own internship? Did you apply it through XKU? What is the application procedure and what's the timeline of it? Um, so basically, in the business school, they have like mass emails telling you about what internships are actually under application. So you can follow the guidelines there. And also you can seek for external sources like uh, GGIS, the website. So you can apply them through going to the company's website and filling their application forms yourself. So basically, the application procedure is quite long. So some of them started like one year before the actual internship and some started like a few months ago. Usually, you will go through some app tests, video interviews, and then you will reach the final stage of face-to-face -face interviews. So I would say it's quite a challenging process, but it's worth it. And what about you? So for me, as I mentioned before, SI is actually compulsory for social sciences students, so most of us actually applied it through HKU. But then, um, actually applied for research internships from the mass mills in HKU, where a lot of psychology labs actually invite students to become research assistants for uh, many of the psychology-related projects. So you can do both. You can either apply for HKU um, in mass mills or through our program, or even apply it outside. I think for, uh, for the MBBS internship, it's quite similar to um... Otherwise, it is uh, compulsory for us to complete a year-long internship after our study. But uh, for internship outside of that, we can choose either to apply through HKU or through other different sources. For example, the Faculty of Medicine actually uh, will send off um, uh, a lot of emails throughout the year to inform us about different opportunities present, as I've mentioned before. Uh, other than that, we can also try to network with uh, different professors outside of uh, HKU. Uh, for example, uh, I uh, I uh, I messaged uh, I I, email, I drop I drop a professor's in Queen Mary Hospital an email to ask her for any research opportunity, and we actually self initiated a project through that email. Uh, also, I actually tried to search for different internships in um, the HA website, and and I think that uh, there are quite a few internship opportunity where we can find over there as well. However, some of the application process is quite lengthy. For example, uh, for my clinical attachment program in the PY hospital, I actually had to submit my resume, my CV, and my personal statement. And I need to submit uh, other documents such as uh, insurance documents and uh, where I need to get approved by the uh, department head first and finally by the hospital authority. So going back and forth uh, would make the application uh, quite lengthy. So I think it's uh, really important for you to ask about the timeline of the application as well when you try to search for uh, different uh, research interns. And uh, my second question for both of you is, uh, what have you learned throughout your internship experience and what do you think is the most important uh, takeaway 
uh, experience you've got. Maybe otherwise you can start it off. Okay, sure. So for me, as I'm only a month into my internship, so knowledge-wise, I might not have um, learned a lot compared to you two. But I would say that for me, the attitude when I'm doing internship was the biggest takeaway. I think as an intern, you're actually bound to make mistakes. I think the um, attitude to not be afraid of making mistakes and to actually constantly learn and be initiative is actually my biggest takeaway from my internship. Thank you. And uh, for me, I think that uh, communication skills is the um, uh, best internship experience I've learned. Uh, I think, um, as Adwise mentioned, uh, it, it's, very, it's very common that we all make mistakes during our internship, but uh, it's very important for us to know to communicate with our supervisors, people that we work with, to let them know our progress and to let them know how they can support us in any way. And I think that it's really important when it comes to um, working. Yeah, I agree with you. I think like um, definitely I learned about uh, the technical skills and the soft skills like all other internships can provide. But I think the most important thing is to find your own interest and your strength, as I've said before, because in business, you have quite a diverse view and it's quite challenging for you to actually get to the right path so that um, you can kickstart your career correctly. Okay. And uh got another question for both of you and I think that the competition for internship seems um, quite intense especially for the uh, 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 the business internship and do you think that um, it's hard for you to find your own internship? Um, I think it, de uh, it depends on industries but then in general it's quite hard for us to find internships because internships in business is not necessary, like not compulsory, but then it's quite important for you to have like a relevant work experience if you wanted to kickstart a particular career, especially in the banking uh, society. So um, people usually uh, fight for good internships during the semester and taking a semester breaks or even placement to finish them. And as I've said, the procedure is actually also quite challenging because you get through app tests, video interviews, and face-to-face -face interviews. So I would say it's kind of competitive, but it's always worth it to try. I think for social sciences, um, it depends as well. Um, I would say it is. It might not be as competitive as business because we're most of us are guaranteed and. in or true and joy but I think as long as you're uh, well equipped with skills and knowledge and also if you're confident and be yourself you'll be able to actually get the internship you uh, want to I think for for my uh, for my degree it's quite similar to what you've mentioned uh, for us uh, the uh, I think the year-long internship would is not very competitive, but in order to get the internship that you want, I think the experience you need to equip yourself with beforehand is quite important. And uh, to find the uh, uh, to find the appropriate internship, sometimes um, I, I think it would be quite competitive to try to uh, get into those internships. And uh, I think that some of the internship uh, experience are not just difficult to get into, but it's some of them are hard to find as well because a lot of internship opportunities um, are not published on company websites. I mean, sometimes students have re really have to take the initiative to uh, try to look for these types of internships. And so I think that's the case for, uh, for, for my degree. And I can see that there are quite a, uh, multiple questions popping up from the uh, Q&A chat box. Maybe we can try to address some of them. Um, Okay, so the first question is, uh, will we have to apply internships by your own or is it the application process assisted by HKU? Okay, so um, for me, because my BBA program uh, does not require like mandatory internships in order to graduate, so um, HKU won't directly assist you in the process of application, but then like I just said, they will send emails about um, what applications are currently provided um, in the, across the industry so that you have like a guideline to apply them. Also, they sometimes will invite uh, headhunters or like um, 
staff from different uh, industry banks or consulting or accounting firms to come to HKU and have like a talk or workshop so that we can be like um, understand more about what's uh, going on in different industry and have like a like a road to apply to this internship. So for social sciences, I think it differs. If um, you're talking about the research internships that you apply by yourself uh, uh, of the psychology projects, or if you mean the psychology centers of science, of course you do it yourself. But if you apply under SI, it is basically a whole course. So you have to complete assignments. The whole application process is basically um, assisted by HKU. And I think for the case of uh, MBBS, uh, sometimes the faculty would assist us by telling us what kind of opportunities out there. But I think the application procedure, for the application procedure and for preparing for interviews, I think uh, candidates will still have to uh, prepare them on their own. Uh, also, uh, as I've mentioned before, if you really want to do research, uh, HKU will assist you by telling you which professors are available and what projects are available. Uh, Candidates will have to contact the professor to know more about the projects in detail before applying for those internships. And for me, for my uh, self-initiated interns, I actually go through the list of professors that are present uh, in Queen Mary Hospital. I then take a look at their research interest, and I even read some of the research papers before I really apply to um, their internship. So I think um, HKU can only assist by uh, giving, telling you that that opportunity is present. But the rest is, I think it's really up to the candidate to take initiative to apply for it. And uh, for the second question, uh, uh, the floor has is, uh, usually how long do the internship take from the start to the completion? Uh, so for me, as I'm doing a term time internship, it actually takes the whole school year. So from um, late September to early April. So uh, because I'm, uh, it lasts for an entire school year. So for me, I only um, go work in a center, so one day per week. But for summer internships, you do it throughout the uh, summer semester. Basically, uh, you work full time five days a week. I think for our, our uh, curriculum is quite similar to what otherwise I've mentioned. I think Abby have mentioned before that we've got a full-time intern and part-time intern. And I think for a full-time intern, it can last throughout uh, the entire summer or even Christmas. Uh, any long breaks you have, you can use that to um, to do your intern. But for me, I, I, I went through a part-time intern uh, and uh, where I only have to work two to three times a week. It gives me a lot of flexibility to work on a year-long project for me. Yeah, I think the most common form of internship in business will be the summer internship because most firms provide summer internships and it's like a time of semester break. So students will be like more free uh, to join internships. But then there are also a lot of people taking placements to like get a semester or a year to gain like a full year experience. Um, and as for winter internships, I think they are more rare compared to the summer and placement ones. Okay, uh, we have another question from the floor. Is whether, uh, whether I can choose internship that is completely unrelated to my major? Yeah, for me, I think it's completely, completely fine because like in university, it's still like a searching path for all of us. So um, no matter what internships you get into, it's still quite valuable experience for you because ultimately you have to find your interest and your strength within the uh, university life, right? So for me, I've also tried like law internships, which is kind of unrelated to uh, the business field I would be working for. But I still think uh, like the skills, the knowledge and also the soft skills I learned there is useful. Well, um, I definitely agree with Abby because um, university is still a process for you to explore your different interests. It's definitely fine to choose internships that's completely unrelated to your major. So I personally actually chose an internship related to my major, but I actually know friends who perhaps major in other subjects, but still take up an internship in a psychology center. So um, I guess it would be refreshing to actually provide some insights from your own major to a completely uh, different internship setting. So I definitely encourage you all to do so. 
Yes, I agree with what otherwise uh, said. I think for me, I did choose internship that is related to my major, but at the same time, I know a few of, a few of my friends who chose some internship that is completely unrelated to their own major. But I think that the uh, soft skills and a lot of skill sets are transferable between internships. And I think those are the skills that are very important, you know, like problem solving skills, communication skills. You know. This, uh, you can acquire these skills even though you're doing an internship that is unrelated to your major. And if you try to do internships that are unrelated to your major, you actually gain more exposure to different people around different, across different industries, you know. At the same time, you can get to know more about yourself, your personality, and uh, some of your strengths and weaknesses as well. So I think it's absolutely fine to choose uh, some internships that are not related to your own major. And uh, we've got another question uh, from the floor is, uh, does Hong Kong U actually offer overseas internships? And is it competitive to apply to those internships? Um, personally, I haven't tried uh, overseas internship provided by HKU. But then I think that they do have some uh, platforms that can promote this kind of internship, such as the workshops and the seminars that I've talked about just now. I think overseas internships are generally less competitive because most of the people would like to try an internship in Hong Kong. But then I still think it's quite a valuable experience. Like for myself, I've been doing an internship in Guangzhou and I think the vision I got there, um, the work experience that is out of Hong Kong, the culture, uh, the values they have definitely inspired me. So um, I'm actually currently applying for an overseas internship in summer. So is it competitive? I'm not entirely sure, but we actually have to go through a pretty complicated application procedure because I've now completed the application procedure for HKU, but I still have to go for another round of procedure um, in Canada. So I guess it might be competitive because it it is a very valuable experience and I'm sure that everyone would be very um, willing or wanted to grasp this opportunity. Yeah, I think absolutely. Hong Kong U does offer some overseas internship, uh, but I just don't think it is very common. And uh, for some of the internships I know, um, students mainly do their internship in Hong Kong and maybe afterwards they do a presentation overseas. Uh, for example, I uh, applied for the uh, Hong Kong U iGEM program a few years ago. And basically, the program is a um, uh, is a program about scientific research. So you do the research in Hong Kong, but afterwards you get a chance to leave Hong Kong to go to USA for a uh, scientific uh, valuable experience where you can, you know, actually go and interact with students across different countries and get to know how they think. And uh, so, yeah, I think. Um, I'm not very sure whether it's very competitive or not, but I do think if you have the chance to go for an overseas internship, you should uh, definitely try and go for it. Uh, we've got another question from the floor. Uh, for full-time interns, do you typically get paid uh, the same as the full-time workers in the industry? Mm, for most business internships, we are actually paid, but then usually we are paid less than the full-time workers because we are interns and we are still learning. So definitely we are paid like less than the graduates who are already fully uh, qualified to do the job. I guess it's the same for me. So for psychology centers, um, as interns, you definitely get paid not as much as full-time workers because the qualifications you have, the knowledge and skills you have, I guess we're not as sufficient as full-time workers. So um, it is expected that you might get paid less, but I think at the same time, the experience that you gain from these um, internships are definitely in, uh, much more valuable. Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, definitely that uh, full-time interns do not get paid as much as uh, full-time workers. But for my internships, uh, I don't get paid at all but, uh, from my workers. But still, I would, I would really appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, expose myself in various internships. And uh, yes, uh, I can see that there are still multiple questions uh, present in the uh, Q&A uh, 
sections. However, uh, due to time limit, uh, we were unable to address all of these questions. Uh, uh, on, uh, owing to that, uh, if you still have any more questions regarding internships, please feel free to raise them in the virtual booth. And uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your info day. And once again, we thank you for attending the sections, and we hope to see you soon in HKU. Goodbye.